Hello, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Detailed. Living Room of Satoshi is a cryptocurrency bill pay service based in Australia, which is set to integrate Dash soon and remove some other cryptocurrencies. To find out details on the whys, the whens, and the whats, I reached out to Living Room of Satoshi's founder, Daniel, and here he is. So to start with, how do you pronounce your last name, Daniel? I don't know. Ah, it's a tricky one. Yeah, it's Alexius. Alexius. It's got an S sound at the end for some unknown reason. All right, Daniel Alexius. And tell us what it is you, how, how are you involved with Living Room of Satoshi? And what is Living Room of Satoshi? Yeah, I'm, I'm the founder of Living Room of Satoshi. Um, so I guess I'm a programmer from way back and that's, that's what I love to do. And when Bitcoin came around, I, I was just fascinated with the technical side of it. You know, it was just something, something amazing and something I wanted to, to do. And uh, in Australia, there was really no way to spend the Bitcoin I had. So I started this company to enable bill payments, which is something everybody does. And um, yeah, Living Room of Satoshi has been doing bill payments for Australians for nearly three years now. Three years in cryptocurrency. That's mm. a long time. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, the way that this is able to work so well for you, correct me if I'm wrong, is that in Australia, most or almost even all businesses who send bills to customers all use this sort of numbering system called BPAY. Is that right? Yeah, Australia has a, actually a, a pretty advanced um, financial system. And when it comes to bill payments, the big four banks in our country have all joined together and made this service called BPay. It's it's kind of a monopoly because um, it, it's a private company, but they they own it, um, so they pretty much charge whatever they like. But the good thing is that almost every biller in Australia uses it, and the ones that don't um, generally accept bank transfers. And Living Room Satoshi supports that as well. Okay, so if I wanted to pay a bill with Bitcoin or any of the other cryptocurrencies that you support, and we'll get into that in a moment, uh, <laughs> but if I wanted to pay an Australian bill using your service, walk me through the steps that I, I would take as your customer. Yeah, one of the best things about the service is that you don't have to log in, you don't have to create an account. Um, it's basically anonymous. You can pay, you can pay my, my phone bill if you want to. You go onto the website um, and you, you take the BPay details from on the bottom of the bill. It's just two numbers. You type them in and you popped up with a QR code to pay it in Bitcoin. And that's literally it. You pay it and it's done. Do I remember correctly reading on your site that you don't have fees? That can't be right. Yeah, we, we don't charge any fees on top of um, on, on top of the bill or anything like that. So the, the amount of Bitcoin that comes up on the front page is just the exact amount you'll pay. Interesting. And then, and then you make the bank transfer on behalf of the customer and that pays the bill. That, that's basically it. Yep. Very interesting. All right. So now the reason that I am talking to you today is that you have now joined the ranks of the very small number of people in the world who have put a proposal for funding into Dash's treasury. Now, why don't you tell us what, what that is about? Because you're going to get paid here really soon, like in a few hours. It, that's an amazing thing. It's really unique um, in, in the cryptocurrency space. I mean, I was contacted about Dash. Uh, I mean, I, I kept track of it over the years, but a number of our customers started asking for it. And when I found out that there was this budget system where um, basically it's like it's like a it's a working DAO. It's an autonomous organization that can pay for whatever the community wants it to pay for. Um, and so I put a proposal forward to integrate Dash into Living Room Satoshi's website um, with a detailed plan and how it's going to do it. And uh, the community said, yeah, they want to do it. Um, and if it's generally something that supports the, the Dash currency, uh, then, then you'll get good support. So, okay, so you mentioned there were some customer requests on your end. Is that the reason that you decided to integrate Dash was because some people had asked for it? Were there additional reasons? What was your main reason? 
Yeah, that's a good question. We've we've experimented with a couple of other, um, I guess, altcoins in the past. We've had them run yes. for six months. We've, yes, please we've tell me. At, uh, in addition to Bitcoin, what are the other cryptos that you accept right now? So we've got Ethereum, we've got Litecoin and Dogecoin, or however you say it. Um, <laughs> and that was basically just to give it a try and, and see what was happening. Ethereum got a lot of publicity, you know, at the start of this year. So we, we thought we'd we'd try it and see what happened. But it kind of became clear that, that, I mean, these currencies work, but that they're not designed for use as, as digital cash, really. They're not designed to be a payment system. I mean, they have other purposes. Litecoin's, um, you know, it was invented uh, to, to try something different um, with the mining. And Ethereum's, you know, all about smart contracts. And, and they work if you want to send money around. But really, the business that I'm in is in, in bill payments. I'm not an, really an an altcoin um, exchange like uh, like a shapeshift or something. So the thing that matters to me is that my customers can easily pay their bills and currencies like that, you know, they're, they're not designed to be used like that. Uh, that's what I've experienced the last six months anyway. Um, and so, so that's, that's what really attracted me to Dash, that it's designed to be digital cash. Okay. So uh, in um, when forming your opinion about uh, these other cryptos uh, not being an ideal form of digital cash, was that was that be like you had tried to use them and you were like, oh, this is kind of not ideal? Was it something that your customers had said, or like what specific events caused you to form those opinions? Well, firstly, I guess is the usage. The usage is very low, um, particularly with Litecoin and Dogecoin. Um, but, but they sort of ha have other uses. Um, people don't seem to be interested in using them as day-to-day -day money. Um, and so th that reflected in the usage on our site. Ethereum had a, a bit more usage. Um, but <laughs> honestly, I've really been turned off by the, um, the, the difficulties we've had with it. Like we've, we had the fork incident and that, that, that did affect us. It affected our business. You know, we, we had customers that had money. We had to chase it down. And even again, more recently, um, there was another incident where the, the nodes stopped validating. Um, and again, we had to chase all that up. We're just kind of getting sick of um, these currencies that aren't, aren't designed for, for use as digital cash. I mean, Bitcoin, it's, it's really stable. It's been running nonstop for three years now. And I feel a digital that Dash is um, like the developers have that in mind as well, that it's going to be used this way. And that's why I think it'll be useful for bill payments. So how and when did you first find and or hear of Dash? Uh, one of my customers uh, is, is quite heavily into Dash, runs a number of masternodes. And uh, I was just having a chat with him. I, I chat with a lot of my customers, actually, because they're often very passionate about, about cryptocurrencies and about that sort of thing. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, just learning about the features, some of the features it had, like Instant Send, um, uh, that, that, that's something that will, I think, be useful for us, especially with Australia's banking system, because they're planning to... Um, in the next year or two to make payments m almost instant. Um, so as I said, they've got quite an advanced um, fiat banking system in Australia. Um, but that's something that matches up nicely with Dash because this instant send feature means that it, when you combine it with the, uh, the fiat instant send, um, you, you know, customers can get their money instantly, um, which is a huge selling point um, for, for people who, for billers, for people who want money. Hmm. And so now, did I also read correctly on your site that you offer a sort of crypto to fiat option also? Yeah, that's right. It's um, mostly uh, mostly bigger companies that use BPay or companies of a medium to large size. There's about 45,000 of them in Australia. Um, Australia is a country of about 20 million people, so that might give you a bit of an idea. But for, for small, like, sole traders, um, your electrician or your plumber or people like that, often they only take bank transfer. And that's what it's, it's designed for, to pay those kind of people. But you can use it to pay, to pay any Australian bank account. And uh, some of our customers will use it to send money from overseas into Australia um, and to their, to their parents' bank account, things like that. So, yeah, okay. it's kind of a gateway into, into Fiat as well. That is interesting. Okay. And so I would like to know more about uh, what you think your integration process is going to be like. Um, 
you know, I, I hear, you know, oh, if, you know, since Dash's code base is a Bitcoin code base, then that makes it easier for integrations or something. But like, what does that mean in your experience? Like, have you begun the integration process or do you at least know what it will look like and kind of how, how it will have to play out? Look, we've got a bit of an idea. We haven't started yet, but I think we'll be starting today um, if everything goes through, which it looks like it will. Um, we plan to run a, a master node um, and use that as our as our payment server, basically. Um, so, and I don't anticipate too many problems there because it's based on Bitcoin. Um, it's things that we're we're very familiar with and we'll be, we'll be able to work with. Uh, we we're really keen to to get a master node into our company because it, that um, kind of involves us in in the Dash ecosystem as well, enables us to vote um, on proposals. And who knows, um, you know, the, it just opens up possibilities um, for the future, especially with, with some more things that are coming with Dash Evolution down the line. You know, that's interesting uh, that you mention, like, hey, as a business, I would like to have a masternode because I would like to vote on how things go. Because that just caused me to think of, you know, like... Um, these, these like mega companies in the Bitcoin space, for example, like the Coinbase or the BitPay or the Shapeshift or whatever, um, they like, they don't get a vote in what mm. happens to Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good, that's a really good feature of Dash because, you know, there's, there's some in the Dash community who really care about the privacy aspects of it. Um, and, and of course, we, we think that's a good feature too, but but others like our company, we're, we're interested in um, in real world usage of it, um, and and making it making it easy for people to use. So having all those you know inputs from people who are actually invested in the ecosystem, I think, is a really good thing for Dash, and it's something that's quite unique. All right. Well, I just have just a couple more questions for you, Daniel, because it sounds like you have a busy day ahead of you. In that, uh, yeah, when cool. your payment comes through, you're going to start integrating Dash. Um, but my, my, my first question is, um, I, I generally ask people like, if I don't immediately understand like what their business model is or like how they make money, um, I'm, do you do this like as a no fee service just because it's like worth it to you to get the crypto, like in exchange for your own fiat. And that's just like, that's like a, an investment that you hope pays off in and of itself. Or do you have like plans in the future to implement a sort of fee model, maybe like later down the line? Sure. Yeah. No, we we started out that way, um, just to make j just for simplicity. Really, um, people don't have to calculate the fee on top of the amount. There's just a single dollar amount, a single uh, crypto amount. Um, we we do make a profit. Um, we we are a profitable company at the moment. So what we do is uh, take the Bitcoin and sell it overseas. The the tax laws in Australia make it difficult, unfortunately, at the moment for for business to really use crypto. Um, but but that's how we we operate at the moment. We're able to to sell it for more than you could in Australia overseas. Um, and in the future, I mean, our real goal is to get billers accepting um, crypto directly. Um, that's what we're working towards. And so whatever we can do to make it easy for both sides of of, um, of the payment to do that, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Have you had any discussions with any of your billers thus far about accepting it directly or has that yet to happen? Uh, we've talked to a few small billers. Um, we've worked up a little bit of an API that people can use to integrate um, and we've had some trials of that. So, I mean, it's encouraging, but um, I think it'll really be driven by, by consumer use. Once people see that there's, you know, there's a lot of people who actually want to do this and you, you can save money on your BPAY fees um, and whatever other fees you, you, if you accept credit cards or whatever. I think that'll be a big selling point. Um, but, but yeah, we want to grow the business to that, to be able to say that. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, two more questions. Firstly, do you, are, is there like a similar, this BPAY system, it, does that exist in similar forms elsewhere? Like basically what I'm asking is if someone is like, wow, Daniel, you have such a cool business model. Like, do you know, can that, can your business model be replicated very easily in other places or is Australia kind of like unique with the BPay stuff? 
I think it very much depends on the country. Um, yeah, Australia's kind of in a unique situation that the big four banks have got them, this monopoly on this bill system and it doesn't look like it's going to change soon. I know there are other countries that with that have similar setups, um, Canada um, and a few others, but uh, at, at the moment we're just focusing on Australia and, and pro probably New Zealand next, um, but I know that things are very different in countries like like the US, <laughs> where it would be much more difficult to, to start a company like this one. Hmm. All right. And finally, where did the name Living Room of Satoshi come from? Because to me, it is both interesting and evocative of a sort of like warm feeling. Like I, I almost see a fireplace crackling and I envision myself sitting like at Satoshi's knee and hearing about how he invented Bitcoin. And so is, is, is that why you named your business Living Room of Satoshi or was there another reason? That, that's good to hear, actually, because that, that is kind of the thing we were going for. Um, we wanted something memorable, yes. um, something to honor Satoshi. And we kind of thought that, well, maybe even um, Mr. Nakamoto will be paying his bills through our service, sitting in his living room, getting his Telstra bill. You know, you never know. But <laughs> that was our vision, yeah. That is an interesting thought. Well, Daniel, thank you for your time. And I am very much looking forward to when you're, when you're fully integrated with Dash and your people can start paying their bills with Dash. So congrats on, on getting your, your treasury bill. That sounds wrong, treasury bill. It's like something the Federal Reserve does. Your treasury proposal. Yeah, I want to get away from those terms. <laughs> Congrats on your proposal passing, and I'll look forward to some updates from you in the future. Thanks, Amanda. Yep. Nice to talk to you. Bye-bye. You may be interested to know that Pete and I have recently launched dashdetailed.com. Here you will find all our videos posted with a text transcript if you'd prefer to read as you watch the show or even instead of watching the show. Dashdetailed.com also contains links to all of our social media profiles and may in the future contain other things as well. Special thanks to Crypto Advocate, who gifted us the URL, and Crypto Cloud Hosting, who is, hey, hosting for us. That's it for this week. Send an email with the word subscribe in the subject line to amanda at dash.org if you would like an email notification every Wednesday when I publish a video. Until then, see you next Wednesday. Ryan Taylor, considered director of finance at Dash, former hedge fund analyst and payments industry advisor, has written this op-ed piece published at nasdaq.com, and I'm going to read it for you today.